Hi, I'd like to show you how to make a fun little uh, drawstring bag. It's just a little square bottomed bag um, with some cords on it and some multicolored fabrics. And one of the reasons we've got multicolored fabrics is because we've made it using some squares of fabric and um, so we've got all different colors. And it's quite reversible. This bag can be in whichever way you prefer, which always is a nice option. So what we're going to do is start off with some squares. So quite easy requirements for a bag like this. I have got a pattern for this bag on my website. It's uh, called Square Drawstring Bag on gourmetquilter.com. Um, and so we've got the requirements on the back tells you that you just need to have five six inch squares. So I've just got all um, different colors for my bags and I thought that this was kind of fun to do. So we just need five squares that are six inches square and then two lengths of cord that are 15 inches long each. And out of that we can make this nice little reversible bag with the little casings and the cord ends to hide the ends of your cord. So to start off with, we'll just cut the fabric for the casings and the cord ends. So that's this little bit that I've got across the top here that the cord goes through is the casing and these are the little cord ends on the end. So with one square, so choose which fabric you want to use for your one square if you've got all different colored fabrics like I have. And I'm just going to cut that. So I've laid it on my board so that it lines up with the board markings. And I'm just going to cut that into two inch strips. So I've just come in two inches from the edge of the fabric and cut two inches. And then I'm going to move across and I'm going to cut, guess what? Another two inches. And then for the actual casings, I need to recut that to get the length that I'm looking for. So I'm going to position that on here. We might just move these out of the way a minute. And these need to be four, in, four and a half inches long. So conveniently, my ruler is four and a half inches, but otherwise you would measure along four and a half inches. And we're just going to trim off those bits because we don't need those little bits. Um, so we've now got two four and a half inch lengths that we're going to make the casings out of. And then for the little cord ends, we just make little pocket ends for the cord. Again, it's two inches wide, but we're going to only cut it one and a half inches. So all of a sudden it becomes two inches long and one and a half inches wide. And we just need two of those. And again, we don't need that piece. So not too much wastage going on. And while we're here cutting, I might cut these pieces as well. And these are all for the bag pieces. So again, they're six inch squares and we're just going to cut them in half. So I've got four squares layered together here. And they just get cut in half. Now that was pretty straightforward. So we've got one pile for the outside of the bag and one pile for the inside of the bag. And now I'm just going to bring the iron over and show you how to get the casings and the cord ends ready. So for the two casing strips, you're going to press in half an inch at each end of these pieces here. And we're going to stitch those down in a minute. So come in that half inch and the same on this one. And then for the cord ends while we're here, we might as well get those ready too. And on the, along the short edges, we're just going to press over maybe only a quarter of an inch or perhaps a touch more. Um, up to you a little bit on that one. It doesn't matter too much. Both of the shorter sides on both of these. And then we're going to go to the sewing machine and do a little bit of sewing. Let's press those all in. And so we can just pop these through pretty much all together at this stage. So we're just going to sew. So I've got the raw edges in. We just want to sew in about a quarter of an inch in from the folded edge just to hold that in place. And we can train piece these through, which is quite convenient. And while we're here, we might as well do the cord ends. So what we're going to do, we've we folded in the two ends there, so we're going to fold that now right side together so that your folds are on the outside here. And we're just going to sew the side seam on that. And that can be quarter of an inch or slightly more would be fine. 
and just do a little back stitch at the top just to hold that one and the same with the other one and then we need to go come back and do the other sides as well so this is a fun little bag for keeping all sorts of little treats in um, it could be for little um, toys or things where you've got small parts it could be for little cosmetic -y type things it could of course be for something totally unnecessary like chocolate perhaps um, oh did I say unnecessary silly me chocolate is such a necessary thing in life so now I need to go back and do the other side of those um, and we'll do that now then it's all done so I'm just going to snip that I've done both sides of here now I'm going to snip those apart and we'll go back to the iron in a minute but we'll just do a little bit more on these little cord ends because we're trying to make these little pockets and have them ready for later so I'm actually just going to snip off the little corners this just helps when we turn them out the right way because they're quite fiddly little things don't snip your sewing but snip away at the corners I'll do that on both of those and then we'll turn them out the right way ready for using a bit later when we pop the cord in so this is a little bit fiddly you might find that you want something to help you turn it with um, these scissors are quite good although if you have scissors that are too sharply pointed you'll put holes in if you're not careful so sometimes a little chopstick or some other little tool is quite helpful for this part um, and I can do both of them while I'm here because we'll need both of them So yes, a touch fiddly, but kind of worth it. You don't have to do the cord ends, of course. You could just knot your strings, but I quite like to have something tidy on the end. So this is now just a little pocket. When we come to pop the cord in our bag later, when we've made up the bag, we can pop the cord ends in and stitch across. So we'll put those to one side for the moment, and I'll get the iron, and we'll press these casings so that they're ready to use. So we've stitched over both ends of that and now we're just going to fold those over with the right side on the outside and the other one as well and we'll pop those to one side while we make up the bag piece as well so they're already waiting to be used soon so now with the with the bag we've got four two sets of four rectangles that are three inches wide by six inches long and we just now need to join those up into a row of strips so that they're going to be joined up. We need to, to make two sets of these. One's for the inside of the bag, which as I've said is going to be reversible, and one for the outside. So if you join up two sets of those, and again you can probably chain piece those through, and then we're going to join those up into like a cylinder, I guess you'd call it. You could join them so that you can continue on sewing you can join them in pairs and then come back and join the pairs together so I've joined up my four strips into a foursome and I've, well, I've done two sets and I've already joined one into this cylinder type shape that just means joining the two ends together here so that we make that cylinder so we want two of these so I'll just finish this one off now. And before I did got to this stage, I had pressed all my seams in one direction. And even though it's um, joined up now, I'm still going to press this seam. It's a little bit fiddly when it's in the cylinder because you can't open things out to get to it. However, I think it's worth pressing the seam just so that you've got nice flat seams on the bag because we won't get another opportunity to get to it even this easily and, and this is quickly so that's joined up into a cylinder now so I've got one inside out and one out the right way so now we're ready to put the casings on so we're going to use this one that I've got out the right way and so your casings are already made and folded and I'm going to position these on one goes on either side so this is our top edge of the bag that I'm working on and I'm going to position that so that it sits nice and evenly across. So we've folded the bag so that we've got one full strip here and, and the folded ones on the sides. So I'm going to pop a couple of pins in here. 
because uh, much as pins get me, it kind of does help. So just taking the top layer of the bag, pop a pin at each end or somewhere nearby just to hold it in place. Uh, if you don't pin these on, and most of you will know I'm actually not a pinner, however sometimes you need to. When, when pieces are quite small and fiddly, it's definitely a time to use some little aids like pins or, or little clips or something, that would be fine. And so then on the opposite side, we're going to put the other casing. So that's kind of straddling that center strip of fabric and there's going to be a gap on the sides on this one. And now we're going to stitch all the way around that top edge to hold those in place. I could just pop that in the machine as it is, but I like to be able to see the casings on the top. So I'm actually going to turn that inside and this is definitely where the pins are going to get me. Um, because it's a little bit fiddly, it's a fairly tight little circle that we're sewing around. It's easier to sew inside the circle rather than on the outside because the machine just makes that a little bit tricky. So now we're just going to sew with a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around the top so that the casings are attached to the bag top. So I don't know if you're going to be able to see this because it is a bit fiddly, but we'll go around. Keep on going between the casings. So always just making sure that you're flattening out and keeping your edges level ahead of where you're sewing. So when things are a little bit fiddly like this, I suggest you just take your time. Don't try and rush it, because that's when things can go wrong. They say patience is a virtue, not really one that I have, however I have learnt some areas where I need to be patient. So I've got that on there and I, I'll just turn it out the right way again so that you can see that the casings are both sitting on there nicely now. So now what we're going to do is pop this inside the other cylinder so that they're right sides together. switch that around. For no good reason I've got the colours opposite to each other there and we're going to sew all the way around this top edge again including the casings in between but we're going to leave a little gap. So between in, one of the, in one of the casing areas we want to leave a gap so we're going to match up the seams this seam to this seam here and we're going to put some pins in to hold that in place while we sew it because again it's quite fiddly and things move quite a lot when you're trying to do this sort of fiddly sewing. So we're wanting to start and stop in a bit so that we've got a gap for turning because we need to be able to get the bag out the right way after we've finished sewing it. So in one of the casing areas, so on one of the, the center strips of fabric, we're going to leave a gap of maybe a couple of inches in between, but then we're going to be sewing all the way around the rest, rest of the way and I'm, but I'm just going to pop pins in so that it all holds together as we go because it is a bit just a little bit fiddly okay so that's all held so here I pop my pins in a little bit so that I know where I'm going to leave my gap so I'm going to start here and sew all the way around to the other yellow pin and this time because it's already inside out and things. I don't need to turn it again. We're sewing on the inside of the circle, so I'm not sure how easy that is for you to see. It's a little bit fiddly here. But again, just with your quarter inch seam allowance, so you're pretty much sewing over the top of your previous line of sewing, and then just easing it round and making sure it's all sitting level and flat ahead of where you're sewing. Pull that out, 
snip our threads, take any leftover pins out. And now if we open that out to the right side, we're going to have this long tube with these casings sitting out like that. So at this stage I'm going to take the opportunity, and there's a gap there because we've left a gap for turning. I'm just going to take the opportunity to do a little bit of pressing because it's definitely easier to do it now than it is later. So I've got both my casings facing that way, which means because it's a little bit heavier there, it's going to have pushed the seam allowance over that way. So I'm going to press it like that, just being careful not to put too many creases on the sides. And also where your gap is, make sure that that edge is tucked in as if it was sewn and you're just going to press that line down there. So I'll do that bit first because it's probably the most important part of this. And then I'm going to flip that over and press again where the casing is. But then I'm also going to open that so that I can just press the rest of that seam until I've ironed a little crease in there so I can iron that out while I'm here. Just press mostly trying to press this seam here is what we're doing. Um, but I'm also going to flip that now and do it the other way. And just doing this double pressing here helps with the seam sitting correctly when it comes to the bag being a little bag later on, shortly even. So just if you can flip that seam allowance around. This possibly seems like a slightly unnecessary step However, I found that overall the bag looks better if I've done this. Okay, so that's enough of that. Now we're going to turn that inside out now so that we can sew up the bottom ends and get a nice little square base that we've got on this bag here. And we do that by turning it completely inside out into a long tube again. So we've got our tube inside out here. And so what we're going to do now, in the center of the two side strips here, we're just going to pop a pin as a marker. We're going to do this at both ends. But we'll do one at a time. And then we're going to bring those two points together. So open that out now. And we can pop one of the pins in to hold those bits together, but then we're going to go back and open this out again so that that kind of pleats the edges in together. And so it should pretty much sit so that your strip is, a, is pretty flat front and back, but those side bits are now meeting in the middle. And just get that nice and level, and you may want to pop a couple of pins in to hold that because it just wants to do its own thing, which is not quite what I had in mind for it. So I've got the pins holding that together at that end. I could do the other one now just to go over it again, just so that you can see again what I'm doing. So I'm popping a marker pin in the side bits down here and on this side as well. Then we're going to bring those together. This is a little bit I guess fiddly, but it gives us a nice base for our bag. So now we're going to bring the two pins together, so we're opening it out the other way. Pop a pin, one pin back in when they're together like that, and then we're opening this back out again to sit nice and flat, but with those held together in the middle there. So your strip should sit quite nice and flat with this one. Just make sure that that doesn't disappear in there. kind of wants to for some reason. And then I would pop a couple of pins in just to hold that. And then we're just going to sew across that edge with all your raw edges together um, at both ends. So I'll just go and do that. Oh, this bag is nearly done. So much fun. And just with five, six inch squares. How cool is that? So just your quarter inch seam allowance coming across. All the way to the other side. Just make sure it's all sitting level all the way. And I'll come and do the other end while we're here, and then we can turn it out through our little gap.
So it's kind of like a little pleat that we've got in there. So you can see that that's kind of pleated in there. And now we've got this gap here. So we're going to turn that through the gap. It's not a very big gap, but it's big enough for the bag to come through. through as well. So we've got that now and we've got a little gap there that we need to close up. So we're going to pop that inside there and we just need to make sure that this base is sitting out nice and square. That should fold out nicely for you into like a square sort of base. And the other way as well, if we turn it in the other way, because it's reversible, so it should look the same inside and out. And I'm going to come up this way because I want to sew around this top edge, but I want to sew on the side where the, the gap is this time. But I'm going to pop a pin in there. Just to hold, that's the gap that we had to turn it through. So pop a pin just to hold it in place. And then I'm going to go back to the sewing machine and because we had previously done that little bit fiddly pressing around that top edge, then that's going to sit quite nice and flat already for you now. You don't have to try and press it again now that we've got it into this bag shape, which would be just a bit harder to do. So I'm going to stitch around now just about an eighth of an inch underneath the casing all the way around, and including where the gap is so that that closes up the gap without leaving any evidence. So again, just sewing on the inside of the bag. Make sure it's just sitting nicely. And then we've only got to do that cord. So we're nearly there. a little bag already with a nice little square base on it it's going to sit quite nicely and and so we've got our two bits of cord they were cut um, 15 inches long both of them and we're going to pop them through our casings and then pop our little cord ends on to finish off the bag nice at the end so I'm putting both pieces of cord onto a safety pin and I'm going to thread both pieces through one of the casings don't go all the way around with both of them because that would not be a good answer at this stage. Then I'm going to take one of the cords off, but I'm going to continue on with the other one. So I'll pull it through a little bit, but don't let it escape all the way through. And then come back through this casing here. I use a safety pin for threading things through like this. It seems just as easy as anything else. You can get bodkins and things, but the cord is quite thick, so sometimes a safety pin is a good answer. So now I've got both of I'm leaving this other one at the moment. I've got my cord looped through one way and I'm going to pop into my little uh, cord end pocket that we made previously. The ends into there and then I'm going to stitch just across the end there so that it's nice and tidy. You could just knot the cords or you could have maybe you've got some nice beads or things like that. There's other ways of doing it, but this is the way that I'm doing it here. So I'm just going to pop that in and stitch right the way across and probably go back on myself just to hold it nice and strong. That's that one done. I'll quickly do the other one. So I've just got to thread the other cord in. Okay, so this piece of cord here, we want the ends out this side, so I need to put a pin on this end and take that round this side and put it through the opposite side casing. And we are nearly done. Okay, so just making sure that you're not pulling the cord right through, you don't want to lose it. 
So it should be out the opposite side of the other one. And we've got one more little cord pocket ready to go here. So we're going to insert the ends into there, stitch across, and we will have a square drawstring bag. little bag to hold very delicious little treats or non-delicious treats and as I said it's quite reversible so you can turn it out the other way you could have used different colors inside if you would wanted to but we were just working with the six inch squares so that's a fun little bag the pattern is available as I mentioned on my website on gourmetquarter.com and enjoy the six inch square bags